What's cooking, Juventus fans? Welcome back to your old lady's favorite YouTube channel. Today, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, the Mercado continues to churn. There's a lot more things going on when it comes to the Mercado in 2022, the summer of 2022. A lot of names you're going to see filtering in and out of here. Uh, so we really got to get a tight hold on what's going on here with Juventus. Are they going to add this many players? What names are nonsense? What names are serious? We'll fill you in now. Stick with us. <laughs> Ciao, ragazzi. Welcome back to the Beyond Canary Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today is Friday, March 11, 2022. And of course, I've got your latest rundown of all things Juventus, all the news that you care about each and every day. It gets you in and out as quickly as possible with their update regarding all things Juventus. Uh, before we do anything, though, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. Let's just jump into it now. And the very first news story of the day that we have here is about... Raspadori, which kind of surprised me, to be honest. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll comment more on it afterward, but let me go ahead and read that story for you today. Tuto Sport is reporting that a real negotiation for Raspadori has not been started yet, but Juve have been working on it for weeks. In the next few days, Juventus could start a negotiation with Sassuolo for a Locatelli-style deal. The feeling is that the deal could reach up to 40 million euros. Um, this is one that's kind of surprised me how much it seems to be gaining some speed and traction. I know whenever I talk about this, and if you come on the channel a lot, you know that I um, I will float a name out there, or the news will float it out there, and I'll comment on it. But Ross Bedorti has really, really been repeated here of late. I don't know if this is a, uh, a bluff call, potentially, for another story that we're going to be talking about here in just a second. Uh, it's Paulo Dybala. It's Paulo Dybala, right? Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about that situation. But I wonder if this is Juve potentially calling Paulo Dybala's bluff, saying, if you don't want to take this offer, if you don't want to take this money, that's fine. We got another young stud coming in that could be a replacement for you easily. I like Raspadori. I like what he does. I think he still has a lot to grow on and a lot to really develop before he becomes a Paulo Dybala heir, if you will. Uh, if you will. <laughs> if you will. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> as it stands right now, if Juventus are looking at getting him done for $40 million, my issue, my issue when it comes to Sassuolo is Juve continue to get taken... Uh, I don't want to say to the woodshed, but I feel like these Italian teams continue to overprice their players. I don't know. Raspadori is worth it. I haven't looked at it today, but I feel like 40 million euros, the same as like paying for Locatelli, is too damn much. It's too expensive to end up play, paying for a player like Raspadori. I prefer it going down a little bit, maybe closer to the 30 million euro range. Seems to be more um, sufficient, especially given... With the player's accomplishments to date so far, I don't know that I really am that impressed by him. I like the player, but also there's also been the uh, history behind him being an Inter fan. Uh, I thought for for how long, at least since last summer, it seemed like Ross and uh, in Inter were a uh, match made in heaven. Is this the uh, is this what's going to happen because uh, Paulo Dybala is going to Inter? We'll see. I don't know if I fully believe in that either. Uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts about this. What do you think about negotiating with Sassuolo, doing the Sassuolo dance once again, Juve potentially going after another player? Is Raspadori a good enough option uh, to bring in to be a replacement for him? Let us know in the comment section down below. Let's continue on, though, because the next one we have up here is talking about, of course, Paul Nabil Pogba. And Nico Skira is commenting, saying that Paul Pogba is ready to leave Manchester United as a free agent in the summer. Not only PSG, Bayern Munich, and Juventus have also shown interest for the French player, who currently earns 17 million euros a year at United. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the one thing I'd say... Obviously, Paul Pogba is a serious target for Juventus. Obviously, Juventus would love to see him wear uh, the black and white shirt once again. Uh, I don't know. If PSG has not been super... I haven't seen a ton of... I mean, I've, I've seen interest from them. But I haven't seen them really build a lot of traction here lately. So I'm kind of surprised that PSG seems to be the like main name that they lead this with. It seems like Juventus and him have been flirting back and forth for a while. The main issue, though, is going to be uh, the payment. How much does he end up making at Juventus? Are they willing to pay potentially, you know, you're looking at, uh, really, I think the number that was floated out there was seven and a half, uh, plus some bonuses. Maybe if you go to a 9 million set with three easy bonuses, that's 12 million euros. Is he willing to take that big of a pay cut to come to Juve? <sighs> Especially if PSG is willing to offer something similar to it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I believe. We'll see what happens here. 
But at the same time, if Juve can get Paul Pogba back, he would be a big time option there in the midfield. Uh, we're going to talk about this a lot, so make sure you stick with the channel. Uh, we've talked about right now the midfield names to keep an eye on or Paul Pogba. Uh, Malinkovic Savage is really a very, to me, it's the most distant one that we have out there. Zaniolo and, of course, Jorginho that we talked about yesterday. So we'll see how this continues to develop moving forward. And let's move it on forward to the next uh, next topic of the day. And, of course, it is Paul, Paul, uh, not Paul, Paul, <laughs> Paulo Dybala. Uh, Tudo Sports over here reporting that Juventus are not afraid of other teams coming for Dybala. And also, for this reason, they have moved the meeting. They are not afraid of you losing Dybala, which is reasonable at this time. At this time in his career, Paulo Dybala is injured more than he's actually playing. So, yeah, I can understand um, not being afraid to lose a player who is injured 60% of the time? What? Like, I mean, maybe 30% of the time. Maybe we'll say 30, 35% of the time. You get a couple games, then you get a couple weeks out. You get a couple games, you get a week or so out. Stuff like that. It just keeps going on and on and on. At some point, what worth is the player, you know, to the, to the club overall? Especially when you're paying him a ridiculous amount of money um, for somebody, you know, for somebody who is doing what he does. I understand you get a goal and assist usually when he is playing. But if, he, if you're not playing in the big matches, what does it matter? If you're not playing against Villarreal in the Champions League, to try to win a Champions League, what does it matter? If you're not going to show up for the Inter match, to me, that's a date that I want to keep uh, circled on my calendar. If he's not playing for Inter, I don't care. I'll be honest, I don't care anymore. Um, if he needs to go, he needs to go. But I would rather retain him. But if you're not playing for the big matches, what good are you doing? I don't care about matches against Sampdoria or, you know, Salernitana. It doesn't do anything for me. Uh the worst of our players should be able to beat them, right? All right. So we'll see how that develops continuing forward. I don't, again, I mentioned it earlier. I don't know that I really believe that he'll go to Inter. Maybe, maybe if he feels that disrespected by Juve, he would do it as a slight. It would be really, really a poor move for him, I think. Um, not because I don't think Inter is going to be a bad place for him to go. I think Inter has got a, a solid squad, you know, right now. And they're, they're in a good place. The problem is, I feel like, do you really want to be one of those players that ruins your relationship with Juve to go to Inter. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, we'll see. Uh, Barcelona, I don't know about those places. I think Juve probably would still be the top option for him to return to. So we'll keep an eye on it. All right. Next story up, we talked about this a bit yesterday, was about the uh, Renato Sanchez and basically Tudor Sports saying that Juve are serious about Sanchez. Uh, there's already an agreement with the players' agents uh, for a meeting during the international break. The Portuguese has a contract that expires in 2023 and therefore will probably leave Liel in the summer. So that's where we sit right now. I'm still very adamant on my feelings when it comes to Sanchez, that he is not going to be a big name that's going to excite me. Would I take him? Fine, as an as as a bonus option, as an added on option when it comes to the Mercado. If I'm a Juve fan, and I am, I don't know why I said it that way. But if you're if if you're a Juve fan and the um the administration is trying to sell you, you know Nedved, all them, if they're trying to sell you, we're gonna get a big time midfielder, and they bring in Renato Sanchez. That's not doing it for me. That is not that that does not fit the bill. The four names that I said to me. And I would say not everybody has the same uh, passion when it comes to certain, like the Italian idea of players, right? Um, to me, it's an important part of me. Uh, I will admit that I buy in to certain players that maybe I, I give them a little bit more um, added oomph than they really should because they are Italian. Obviously, Zaniolo, uh, Jorginho, who I give a little bit more credit to, those kind of players that does something for me rather than a Renato Sanchez, who is, I think is, well, obviously he's a lower level player compared to those two as well. I think to me, the Sanchez idea was a bit more of the uh, Zacharia Chuamini kind of level. And Chuamini obviously is a bit higher. Um, and I love Zacharia since he came to the club, but I still don't think that would, that would move the needle for Juve fans when it comes to feeling confident about your squad moving forward. And also feeling like you're going to compete um, for, you know, the Scudetto UCL, with this kind of player. A Paul Pogba, a Malinkovic Savage, definitely is going to do it. So we'll see if he ends up being an addition to the, one of them. If they try to sell him as the main midfield target, the um, let's just say the comment section will probably be on fire in here, I'd imagine. Our lives will be on fire. The chats. The little chat chat, right? All right. Then we continue on. Nico Bianchi is saying that basically many options for the left-back position. As we know, we've talked about many recently uh, different options that Juve could go with. Uh, none of them seem to really be 
shining, though, if we're being honest. He says Juve will probably sign a left back in the summer. Marcos Alonso is one of the targets together with Cambiasso. And, of course, Emerson Palmieri, because that name will refuse to die. You're going to see Emerson Palmieri being mentioned each and every year until <laughs> until he's done with football, I imagine, at this point. Allegri likes the player. So if he likes, he likes Emerson Palmieri, anything you can get something with him and get him for a cheap fee. I, I'm not high on it. I'm not even really positive on it, but at the same time, if, that's fine. It, it, can't, it can't be worse than Alexander, right? So anyway, those are some of the names. Obviously, we talked about the other names um, that are floated out there. Lodi, yada, 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 all those. We'll see what happens. Um, and I understand a lot of people are really high or really pushing to want to get a solid, solid left back. The problem is, is there's no like star talent when it comes to the left back position really to go with. That I'm just kind of really sitting in the way I'm stewing with this is just give me somebody better than Alexandro, get a good deal done with that. Fine, let's focus on the big time midfield target for now. But if you can at least get somebody who's better than Alexandro, sorry, Alex. <laughs> uh, continue on though, because Zedadel Sports says that Juve's injury record it's bad, it's bad. We know this, you know, the whole season has been kind of derailed. Due to injuries, due to Paulo Dybala, um, you know, Mustin McKinney, Federico Chiesa, um, even for different portions of the year, uh, Marata has been injured, whatever have you. It says of the 145 games so far missed by Juventus players due to injury, 112, that's 77% of games have been caused, or of those injuries have been caused by muscle injuries. So that's, I mean, what does that say for Juve, right? Does that have to do with the training? Does it have to do um, with the conditioning of these players, because this is not a cur- I don't see this being a current uh, common issue around the spectrum. You look at City, ah, you have injuries littered here and there, but you it's I mean the whole team half the time feels like they belong in J Medical. So what does that mean? What does that say about Juve's um, either the medical conditioning, the, uh, the 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 training, whatever they're doing? Are they training too hard? I, and it's such a weird thing because I use it in so many sports whenever you have a lot of injuries. But I'm, it's hard not to buy into it, right? Is it not hard to buy into, hey, maybe there's got to be something wrong with the way that the uh, the training staff is doing this. Are they pushing them way too hard? Are they not getting them the amount of rest that they need? Um, for instance, uh, it looks like that um, our guy Dusan, Dusan Vlavic will be rested for the next match. I think it's against Sampdoria. I believe if I'm correct, I apologize. If I got that wrong, I should know it because it's tomorrow. So he'll be rested for that match. What does that mean for Juve in the competition? Hopefully, that's a team that you should be able to win without him. But at the same time, you've got to make sure guys are rested because you don't want Dusan Vlaovic ending on that list as well. So it's just an issue. The team, the club, needs to figure out these injuries issues. Are they getting just a bunch of players that are really um, – and I have a hard time believing this that – are, that are just preconditioned already to be easily – Injured? I don't know. I don't think that is. There's something going on here. I'd like to figure out what that is so we can try to rectify the situation. Um, final, Alejandro didn't put this in here, uh, and I, I don't, I'm not going to do this all summer, but this is the final news story of the day. And Gazetta does sport, of course, they had to do this to me. Just when I think that I'm out, they pull me back in, right? And that is, they put the news story, they floated out there saying that Donnarumma is an option that Juventus are going to be looking at in the summer because of issues going on. Obviously, you've seen the videos and heard all the nonsense between the fighting and yelling and screaming at PSG. I don't know how much I buy into it. I do know that uh, El Khalafi or whatever is a um, – an, he's an ass hat. That's the only way I can say it. The way he's threatening people, yelling and screaming, uh, acting like he's uh, – you know, he's, he's treating high level of um, members of, you know, the sporting world as if they're low – you know, lowly position workers, no offense, like blue collar workers, and that you can just walk all over them. That's not how this works. But anyway, whatever, I don't know, you know, there's rumors of Neymar and him going at it, Donnarumma, whatever have you. We'll see. It's, of course, going to open up. You know, Juve, Donnarumma is a new story that's going to get fans interested in. I can't do this for another summer to have my heart broken, is what I'll say. Uh, it's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. That's why. Alejandro treated it as a non-story. That's why it's not included. But I decided to mention it anyway because I can't, can't break my heart again, right? <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts on all the stories we talked about today in the comments section down below. Let me know your options of what you're looking at. What would be your ideal Mercado, right? Uh, 
at this point, now that I'm not interested in it, I'm. You can say the guys out. We know Rabio. We know different guys. Uh, you know that are lower level. That are not uh, Alexander, whatever have you. That Juve don't want to keep at the club long term. That's fine. What are your options that you want to see? How many men is it to bring into the club? Who do you want to see in this Mercado list? Uh, leave that in the comments. And be reasonable. Be reasonable. Don't tell me I want Malikovic, Savage, and Pogba. That's not happening. The two of them together is not happening. Maybe uh, Pogba and even like a, you know, Jorginho Zaniolo. Maybe that's possible just because of different financial happenings. I don't see, you know, but, but be reasonable. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think about Dybala? All that good stuff. I want to hear uh, how you all feel on this. Anyway, guys, that'll do it today for today's show. I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. As always, make sure you please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Come on, join our community, what we're doing here, and hit that bell icon to stay notified for all our latest videos. Also, please consider joining the member squad. We love our members here. They're really a big part of what we do here, and they help us... Um, to one they help us to run this right without them we wouldn't be able to afford some of the things that we have to do um to just you know behind the scenes stuff the the normal the things you see behind me the the not really behind me the lighting the camera all that good stuff is thanks to them and then of course also that's why we're able to do all the live streams that we do consider joining you get cool emojis you get a lot of cool stuff there but you also get to uh, join in in our um, Discord uh, chat group, which is a constant connection uh, that we have with you guys. It's really cool, really good to see, and we really get to know each other better as well. Also, make sure, please, if you want, follow us on Twitter at, uh, and Instagram at Beyond Canary Zone, and follow me if you feel so inclined at Justin Sofro on Twitter as well. I'll see you guys next time. Forza Juve, Forza Beyond Canary.